I take the right leg back into hip extension, the hip extensor muscles automatically reciprocally relax the hip flexor muscles. So as I sink down to the right hip, it doesn't feel like a stretch, it feels like a movement between muscle activation at the back of the body, muscle lengthening at the front of the body. I push the sitting bones forward, firms the front of the spine. That relaxes the back of the spine and it gives me firmness. Then I bring the head down. Moving the head down lengthens the femoral nerve and the spinal nerves. The spinal cord lengthening from the back of the neck all the way down the back of the spine and the spinal cord then comes to the femoral nerve which comes out the front. So it comes like this. And so you can feel a difference when the head is up you feel perhaps a stretch or lengthening in the front of the hip but when the head is down it feels different. It becomes more like a nerve tensioning. This nerve tensioning automatically makes the body feel warmer and it's also tensioning the stomach meridian, the stomach acupuncture meridian. Before standing up, I push the hips forward. That firms the front of the abdomen and it gives me a spinal grip. Front of the abdomen is firm by pushing the hips forward. Squeezing the buttocks also tightens the back muscles. So the front and back of my body are firmed as I come back up. And that means I've got some sort of core stability. Again, lifting the arms up, tractions the spine. I come to do a deep lunge, protecting my knee by turning the foot and knee out and tightening the knee. Also gripping with the left toes protects the knee. Squeezing the right buttocks protects the lower back. I breathe into the abdomen before going down. And then pushing the hips forwards allows the exhalation to happen naturally. Again, I pull with the fingers and the armpits and push down with the sitting bones. That gives co-activation of the muscles on opposing sides of the lum a lumbar spine complex. And that co-activation gives stability like core stabilization is thought of. Then I can breathe still comfortably into my abdomen because I'm not tightening muscles that inhibit the diaphragm. Lifting the hips back up, I come back to the kneeling plank, pushing the hips to the hands. If I were to emphasize the kneeling plank position, you would see it actually is quite different in appearance. I'm pushing the sitting bones forward, along with that the hip muscles are active. If I continue to do it, it will do this. So that's quite an active movement of pushing the hips forward. That sense of pushing the sitting bones forward, which you saw lifted me into the air, is still happening in the push-up position. The kneeling push-up, or its counterpart, the full push-up. Notice here also my fingertips are fully white with pressure. The fingertip being white with pressure co-activates the muscles around the wrists, which gives wrist stability. Stability in a push-up position or any weight-bearing position on the arms relates to an intimate connection and relation between what's going on in your wrist, elbows and shoulders, and the upper back and the neck. So to make it more stable, I lift the upper back up I push the hips to the hands. I push the armpits towards your th the thighs. The elbows are strong and they're made further strong by squeezing the heel of the hand inwards. And that causes supination, supination of the wrists of the forearm, which uses, as you can see, as you turn the palm upwards, that tightens the biceps. So even a push-up position, you try and turn the palm upwards, that also tightens the buttocks, the, the biceps rather. Pushing down on your, elbow, on your hand, as in doing a push-up, automatically tightens the back of the elbow. So the combination of doing a, um, a push-up position while trying to turn the hand outwards will give a very strong elbow, which helps then support the armpit, which helps support the shoulder rather, which helps support the wrist. And again, keeping the chin to the throat allows for a firmness to go reflexly to the abdomen and the lower trunk. It's easy to make a mistake in the push-up and let the elbows come down too far, which just rests on the anatomy then. Keeping the shoulders elbow height is a lot more challenging. This tractioning movement is later enhanced and made more challenging by actually lifting the hips off the floor. Lifting the hips off the floor, you'll see me demonstrate later, includes this movement of pulling with the hands 
we call it the cobra action. It also includes the movement, which is lifting the collarbone, which we can call the plank action. It also includes the movement of the sitting bones forward and down, which we can call a lunge action. But it's like a double-legged lunge, lunging at the same time. And it also includes this movement, which we can call a bow action, where you see my shoulders turn out. Shoulders turning in, shoulders turning out. Shoulder turning out action helps open the chest. So you can see all these movements. To advance this simple cobra position, I can come to what's called the upward facing dog with the hands next to the lower ribs. I lift initially to the same shape in the air. A common problem with anyone doing physical exercise, including, including some sort of stretching, is that people just collapse. And to collapse here, I'm just fully passively hanging with gravity, and in instantly the lower back becomes squashed. Generally, it's better that the body only moves as far as it chooses. So if someone can lie on the floor and then only lift up this high, this is the spinal extension they might, their spine will want to do and be happy doing. So they should only lift off the floor this high. But to have a person who's able to bend that far collapse like this would cause a problem in their back after some time. On the other hand, if someone is strong enough to lift this high, then that sort of bend is reasonably okay.